Hello everyone. In my prior recording, I went over a wide range of topics regarding Phantom Doctrine. Today I'm going to focus on the combat mission setup and agent stats. Let's start with the mission setup. You'll notice the top row is the agents that you have selected for sending on the mission. The bottom row is your support slots. The disguises and the support slots will only unlock if you have done a recon mission prior to doing an assault. This is why I said you will always be doing recons in the prior recording. Now, the disguises will only allow your agents to have pistols, revolvers, and SMGs. Given how many missions I've done uh, as infiltration using disguises, I would say that those are the most important weapons in the entire game. I have rarely been in combat. But um, we'll discuss this more a little bit later. just want you to be aware of that. Moving on to the support slots. You can select an agent to do different tasks in here, such as uh, cleaner, tactical spotter, evac helicopter, and others. The one support slot I want to talk about is the sniper silenced. The sniper silenced seems to be a fixed amount of damage throughout the entire game. This has not changed for me in perhaps an entire eight days. It does 100 damage flat out. While it may seem good, the problem is once you're at this point in the game, then there are some things that have more than 100 HP. The chances of a target being low enough HP to be picked off by a sniper is pretty slim at this point in the game. I would say this is more of an early on thing than mid to late game. What you really want is the evac, helicopter, and the spotters. You can buy the base version, tactical spotter, but I did find a blueprint for a sweeping spotter. I think it's the improved version of it. Those are the ones that are most important. This is why I was saying that actor is really not that good of a perk. It's because I always run with spotters. I am always aware of the map in some form or another. There are blind spots, of course, but when I know where a blind spot is, I can prepare for it much better. This gives me the necessary distance to set up on a mission when it comes to infiltrating cells. The enemy agents have ridiculous vision range. We're talking roughly 10 squares. So I have to keep agents really far back to avoid that. That's why I like the spotter so much. But anyways, we've talked about that a lot. Let me go back to the crew quarters now. I went over perks, but I didn't go over stats in the last recording. I guess we can also cover background while I'm at it. I have hired one agent recently. Let me f look for it. Uh, Magnate is the name. There it is. If you click on the stat info bar, it will tell you what each stat does for you. From my time with playing this, I will say the most important is respiratory. Respiratory influences damage threshold and movement range. Pair that with the movement range stat, respiratory movement range. You can have agents that can move really far. Magnate is my very first agent that has three movement arrows. She can move an amazing amount per turn. 
Of course, she also has faster movement, so that helps too, but still. Between these two, she can move like crazy. She can move, I want to say, probably about 15 squares a turn. This is very awesome. It not only helps me complete missions quicker, but if I do find myself in a combat scenario, then I'm able to find cover and then get to it quickly. That's why I'm saying respiratory and movement range is the most important. I would say circulatory is the next most important. This influences hit points and all that. So she has 129, which is great, given that she has all the perks I need. Now that we've talked about the stats, let me move into the background. You'll notice that agents have different backgrounds, and they do help some of the time. From what I've seen so far, every background will eventually catch up with the training. Meaning that if a training says it's going to give you, uh, let's just say TT, which is a pistol, this thing right here, uh, then you will eventually have that, right? Like here, I'll show you an example. Um, Bone Meal is KGB, and you'll notice her thing says TT Sparrow. So while it does save a slot, the one thing I do like for the training required for TT, which is Warzone Operations, is Interconnected. Essentially, Interconnected makes it so when I disable a single security system, I disable the entire grid. This saves me so much time on a mission. So that's what I mean by things eventually catch up. You will eventually get the training for it. The only background that I have ran into that I would consider important is something like United States Marine Corps or um, SEALs. NSA has the same thing as SEALs. It's heartbeat sensor under NSA and SEALs. It tells you where the enemies are and a radius around you. This is what I meant by being prepared for blind spots. When I'm aware that there's a blind spot, it tells me that I need to use the heartbeat sensor in that particular area. Or if I don't have an agent with the heartbeat sensor, then I know to take things slow and approach it cautiously. Let me see if I can find you at United States Marine Corps. Here we go. United States Marine Corps, the ability is sure shot. From what I understand, sure shot, it makes it so the target can't dodge. That is really good, especially when you pair it with um, a sniper rifle. So in short, United States Marine Corps NSA or SEALs is so far the best backgrounds that I've ran into. Freelance does help, but not as nearly as much as the others. War and Ally restores awareness to an ally. If they've lost a lot by doing headshots or other specials, you can restore a huge amount of awareness to them so they can continue doing it. It does help, but I wouldn't say it's important. Let's move into weapons now. When it comes to weapons, there's going to be a lot of them, but pistols are by far the most important from what I've seen, followed up by uh, submachine guns. You'll notice that when you hover over the pistol, it tells you attack single, attack headshot. This tells you what the weapon can do. Attack headshot means you can spend focus to do an increased amount of damage. The reason I say this is the most important is because if you end up getting a lot of enemy cells or operations, you're going to be spread thin. 
you're going to have to rely on agents that don't have the HP to knock out enemy agents on that particular mission. If you run into a situation where you can't knock out the enemy agent, try getting within an adjacent square to them and then headshotting. When you're sitting on an adjacent square to an enemy, the weapon will do its maximum damage. In this case, 139. I have yet to find any agents that can survive 139 damage. Perhaps later in the game I will, but not right now. I've gone through, I want to say, most of mid-game, and the highest HP I've seen is 119. So there's that. Um, while we're talking about pistols, let me cover another subject that kind of relates to all weapons. Uh, once I find my leader. There we go. You'll notice that this 44 does more damage than the TT. But look how many mod slots it has. One. That means if I'm going to be going with a silencer, that's all I can expect. Whereas if you look at something like the TT, there's three mod slots. So it's very possible for the TT to stay silenced and do almost as much damage as the revolver, if not more. Because look at how many upgrades there are that I've located so far. Speed plates don't really matter for pistols because they grow really quickly anyways. But there are things like soft trigger pulls, which is more damage. Um, Spring-loaded ejector, titanium firing pin, AP bullets. I actually have not found too many of these. But DT penetration plus 20, that negates a good amount of armor. Uh, mercury bullets, plus 5 damage. Octanal barrels, 6 damage. So you can see that there are ways to get back up to uh, that amount of damage. So keep this in mind when you're looking at weapons. While on the note of weapons, I want to point out two more things. Each weapon will tell you what it's capable of. Single headshot, single full auto burst, full auto. So you can see that there are some weapons that are either full auto always, some that, are, that can switch between burst, full auto, or single, and so on and so forth. The most important thing is single shot, I think. This is uh, going to fall into the subject of snipers. The reason I think single shots are the best is because of the fact that you end up expending less ammunition to achieve similar results. This is why snipers are so powerful in this game, when they're fielded on agent, not on the support thing. Not only that, they have the greatest range in the game from what I've seen. This game does factor in range. Your minimum damage and your maximum damage is influenced by how many squares away from the target you are. Of course, the AI is not restricted to that. They can hit you from 20 squares away with an assault rifle at max damage because that's game balance for you. But regardless, you want to worry about doing the most damage in a single shot. The only other weapon that can do more damage than the sniper rifle is the shotgun. You'll notice that the minimum damage is crazy high on the shotguns. Look at this. The AMR, which is the best sniper rifle I've found so far, is 12 to 122 in a single shot. The uh, cause, which is an automatic shotgun, does 116 to 126 in a single shot. So its minimum damage is much higher. But of course, you're also restricted. This weapon 
has the lowest range out of everything. So this only works in certain situations. Okay, I think I've covered everything that you would possibly need to know regarding weapons, combat, and other things. So I'm going to go ahead and end recording. I hope this helps. Thanks for listening.